So my presentation is about comparing ultrasound abdominal and vaginal in embryo transfer, and I will go to uh, even using uh, predetermined measures without ultrasound guidance uh, as a technique. So the success of the method of embryo transfer, whatever it is, tactile, transabdominal, or transvaginal, or transvaginal with predetermined measures, depends on where the catheter tip will be, where the embryo droplet will be placed, and whether this will occur within a reasonable time without catheter touching the fundus or not. This is, this is why success can happen or failure can happen. And the uh, Cochrane review showed that actually ultrasound increased ongoing clinical pregnancy rate. So ultrasound guidance improved uh, the, the pregnancy rate of embryo transfer as compared to before. If you look at all the references, you will find that the distance needed to have good pregnancy rate is more than 10 millimeter. So if you put the embryos more than 10 millimeter from the tip of the fundus, you can have good results. If you put them less than that, you have poor results. And if you look at this study, you will find that the first group in which they put the embryos less than 10 millimeter from the tip of the uh, fund, uh, endometrium stripe had the lowest pregnancy rate. On the other hand, recent publication and recent experiences showed that the distance between the fundal endometrium uh, surface and the air bubble should be less than uh, 10 millimeter. So transabdominal guided uh, embryo transfer was found to improve the implantation and clinical and ongoing pregnancy rate as well as the live birth rate, as we've said. And this is actually the gold standard of the practice now. So if you want to compare anything, you should compare it with the transabdominal ultrasound. In the transabdominal ultrasound guidance, you use the abdominal ultrasound, you fill the bladder, and you introduce the embryo transfer catheter. The outer sheath is locked at the internal os and then you proceed, the, you advance the internal uh, catheter till about one or 1.5 centimeter from the tip of the fundus. So that when you push the embryos, they will come to a point that is less than one centimeter from the tip of the fundus. And in, in this uh, diagram, you can see uh, this is where the tip of the catheter should be, and this is where the droplet will be put, and this is the length of the uterine cavity, and this is by uh, abdominal ultrasound. On the other hand, some studies compare transvaginal and transabdominal ultrasound uh, guided embryo transfer with no firm conclusions. Fir no firm conclusions, it means that they both could have, have the same efficacy. So you can use abdominal ultrasound or you can use vaginal guided ultrasound to put the embryos in the proper place with uh, similar results. The disadvantage of transabdominal ultrasound are it needs a good operator and a good machine. It needs a full bladder. There is difficulty in overweight patients and occasionally some difficulty in locating the tip of the catheter because the catheter may go away from the ultrasound and then you lose where the tip of the catheter is and you advance the catheter more and it will touch the fundus and this will decrease the pregnancy rate. The disadvantages of the transvaginal ultrasound are difficulty in manipulating the probe, why, the probe with the catheter and speculum in place uh, or dislocating the catheter while moving the vaginal probe sometimes or occasional difficulty in locating the catheter tip when it is away from the tip of the ultrasound, vaginal ultrasound. A technique that was published in 2016 is the blind placement of the embryos, but after taking a transvaginal ultrasound measurement of the uterus and cervix and determine, determining upon these measurements where you want to put the, the droplet of the embryos, containing the embryos. Uh, the disadvantages of the blind technique, actually it's not a blind technique because you take the measurements on the day of the transfer, the cervix and the endometrium stripe of the uterus, and then you uh, subtract 1.5 from these and you put the embryos at this location. The disadvantage of this predetermined measure, it's not a blind technique, it is a predetermined ultrasound measurements, 
Sometimes there is improper determining of the location of the external os. And I asked Professor Dali and I asked uh, some of the experts of ultrasound, how can you get the external os? And they gave me uh, a lot of good advice. How can you get the internal os? And also they gave me a, a lot of good advice. Sometimes there is improper uh, placement of the droplet and unnoticed kinking of the catheter. And this is a problem if you are not very sensitive to uh, introducing the catheter. The main advantage, it's one operator. It's very quick and it's very easy. So we, we did a pilot study to compare two techniques, vaginal ultrasound guided uh, transfer with the transvaginal ultrasound measurement of uterine length followed by unguided embryo transfer. So it was a pilot study. And uh, I will show first the technique of vaginal ultrasound uh, guided uh, embryo transfer with the speculum in place. So you clean the cervix with betadine and then you clean with saline and then you choose which point uh, A, B or C or D will show you the sagittal plane of the uterus and the cervix like this uh, exactly clear so that you can measure the length of the cervix and the length of the uterus and then you subtract 1.5 from this lens and you put uh, your embryos. After taking these measurements, you introduce the catheter till the internal os. And afterwards, you put the ultrasound, the vaginal ultrasound, and you introduce the internal catheter till you see the tip at 1.5 centimeter from the tip of the fundus. And then you eject the embryos where they will be located roughly uh, to one or less than one centimeter from the tip of the fundus. The second technique is vaginal ultrasound guided embryo transfer after removing the speculum. So you put exactly the same technique. You put the speculum, you put the catheter, you remove the speculum, you introduce the vaginal ultrasound, or you put a posterior vaginal speculum like this one uh, without the casco and you introduce the catheter and then you drop your embryos at the location that you want. Uh, Vaginal ultrasound measurement of uterine and cervical length followed by immediate unguided embryo transfer. Clean the cervix as usual, gently remove the mucus, and then put the ultrasound. Determine the length of the cervix, the length of the endometrial stripe, and also sometimes take care of the angle that could be present between the cervix and the uterus because this creates some difficulty. The length of the cervix is the length of the external sheath of the catheter plus two millimeter. You need these two millimeter to introduce this just beyond the internal os to avoid kinking of the catheter. The length of the uh, internal catheter is the length of the endometrial stripe minus 1.5 and then when you put this inside the tip of the catheter will be here you will eject the embryo slowly they will move to here and then you will be within uh, less than one centimeter from the tip of the endometrial uh, stripe uh, so when we compared the three techniques uh, this is without ultrasound guidance. This is with ultrasound guidance and the speculum inside. And this with ultrasound guidance without the speculum inside. Uh, the precision of placement of the droplet was the same in all techniques. There was no difference. And the pregnancy, the time to complete the transfer, of course, was very short in the technique in which we did not use ultrasound guidance. And the pregnancy rate in the three techniques were more or less similar. So using, uh, using uh, uh, predetermined ultrasound measurements and then moving the ultrasound away and putting the embryos based on these uh, measurements uh, is a good technique if you can uh, master it. And these are the la our last 40 uh, pregnancies. And if you look the numbers, uh, this is the, the distance between the droplet and the fundus, 
the tip of the fundus. If you if you can see these measurements, it's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. So it's not even point. It's not even 10 millimeter. So the, what is most important is to place the tip of the catheter 1.5 from the tip of the endometrial stripe, and then you eject the embryos, and the embryos will go to one or less than one uh, centimeter from the tip of the fundus, and pregnancies will not be affected because our pregnancy rate in these cases are around 71%. And uh, at the end, I would like to thank all the speakers. I would like to thank Efri. I would like to thank the excellent presenters that preceded me and made me a difficult time. Uh, and I would like you to join uh, first the ultrasound uh, interest group of uh, Efri because this is really, I learned from them a lot. And I would also like you to join the uh, ultrasound, the, uh, the interest group of ART of Efri Ega. Uh, uh, we are following the steps of uh, Professor Dahlia and uh, her colleagues in, uh, in our interest. Thank you very much.